Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining for this video. I'm Cecilia and I'm working on a new painting which includes a honeycomb. So I thought it would be fun to share with you how to paint that. So the oil paints that I use are Windsor and Newton water mixable oil colors. And the colors that we need are titanium white, cadmium yellow pale hue, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, raw sienna and raw umber. Basically we mix three color tones in total. For the first one we need lots of cadmium yellow and we add a little bit of raw sienna and a tiny bit cadmium yellow pale hue to it. As well as a tiny bit of white so that the paint will be more opaque. Then we make a second color, a brighter one, for that we use cadmium yellow pale hue and white and a little bit of cadmium yellow. The third color is a mixture of cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, raw sienna and a tiny bit of raw umber. So you see we have three colors, a darker one, a mid-tone and a bright one. We're going to paint two layers. First we're going to create a nice gradient. The right side will be a little bit darker and the left side brighter. We use our darker color for the edges, then we blend it with the mid-tone color and at the very left side we use our bright color and blend it with the mid-tone yellowish-orange color as well. Once you're satisfied with your gradient, when everything is blended well and the paints are opaque, we have to let it dry for one or two days and then we can continue with the second layer. Now that the surface is dry to touch, we can move on with painting the structure. You can see I already started and basically that's, that is what we are going to do now. We paint these hexagons and we pick for that our tiny brush, this one, and our brightest color, so the white mixed with cadmium yellow pale hue and a little bit of cadmium yellow. And then we start with painting a zigzag line like that. And we want to have the tips not too pointed. It's, it's more a flat zigzag line like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we will fill these hexagons out later on with all the shades and values. But yeah, we want to have the structure as accurate as possible. So we really want to have a horizontal zigzag line. And yeah, the tips should be the same size. And if it is too hard for you to draw these lines very horizontally and the tips in the same size, Maybe you can try to paint some sort of a line, but a really transparent one. So I use another color for that. Oh, you can barely see that. Like that, for example, and a line where the tips intersect. Hope you can see that because we will fill the hexagons out the line will disappear so it doesn't really matter if that helps you could try that I do it without but I will show you quickly so like that there is a line quite horizontal right and then I would just 
look that here the tips are on the same line. Maybe that helps or otherwise you can have certain reference points like here at the end and here. So then you know that your line is really horizontal. And when you can barely see the lines here in the right area, you can just add more white to the color that we premixed. And then you will see it. So I do that as well. I just add a little bit of white to the premixed color and now I can see it better. Yeah, so after painting that zigzag line, then we will paint a vertic vertical lines down from each tip. And they all should have the same length. And this line should be the same length as this line here. And yeah, then we draw a zigzag line again. not that pointed make sure it is flat enough And when you paint this lower zigzag line here, you want to make sure that this lower tip is aligned with the upper one here. So then it really looks symmetrical. So this process is quite repetitive, that's why I will speed it up a little bit. So now we have the structure and what we are going to do is we want to give it more space. You see it's pretty much two dimensional and basically what we're going to do is we fill out each hexagon with the values. So the colors that we use are the ones that we pre-mixed and we have even a little bit of darker shadow color that we already have in our palette. And for that, I just mixed cadmium yellow and a little bit of red and a little bit of raw umber. And then I've got these nice color. 
you see it's a little bit darker than we have in the background because we want to paint the shadow area right so what we do is we fill out here the borders and in this case we fill out the lower half of the hexagon because we have to know where the light is coming from we also want to keep in mind that there's a color gradient from the right to the left side so we have here a darker color this orange and then it gets brighter so the colors that we use to fill out the hexagons is going to be different the more we are going to the left side but for now we will just paint here i'll show you quickly how we do that so we fill out here a little bit at the edge the hexagons like that and you can give it even more shape and form by by just putting in some little spots here and there like that i mean it doesn't have to be that much accurate it's just to make it three-dimensional right And I only fill out the hexagons that are really in this orange colored area and then um, we will use another color but for now we just fill out these ones and then we're going to use our basically the same color that we have here and we will just blend it a little bit in a way that is not that harsh the transition of these colors like that we just blend it a little bit you can fill out the whole area or just part of it And you can also blend some areas more and others less. In this way you have a great variety because not every hexagon looks the same. And then we're going to use our brighter orange, pretty much the one that we have here in the middle and paint some highlight highlighted areas and in this case it is kind of at the opposite side of the shadow so here we painted the shadows here so we're going to paint the highlights here in the upper half It's gonna be a little bit brighter and then we want to brighten it up even more by using our really bright color which is the yellow that we used here on the left side and we put some highlight spots here some tiny highlight spots Just a few and if you want to go even brighter you can add more white to it
then you can also if you want to i definitely do that just paint these lines a little bit like you can blend it a little bit or you just repaint them if you mess them up with the other colors sometimes i darken a little bit some areas and brighten up other ones it depends just in a way that everything is well integrated within the bigger picture So now let's have a look at the middle area. For that we use as shadow color this, this orange here that we used. And we paint again the edges. If it is too bright we can mix it a little bit with our shadow colors that we used here. But we paint the edges the upper half and a little bit here in the right side. No, sorry, I mean we paint the lower half and here a little bit at the right side and like that. And here I only paint the lower half just to give some variety and a different kind of impression of light. And then you see here it's kind of too dark this color for this really bright area so we're going to mix it with our orange that we used here and use that as shadow color Like that and here I add some other shades and then again we have to blend it first let me add here a few more shadow areas can also give it a different shape by painting kind of a line here coming downwards from the middle that looks also good so now we have to blend it again and we just blend it with the same color basically that we used here so we use this mid-tone orange and blend everything nicely like that. There can be some harsh lines if you want to. That looks good. Then I use more yellow the more I move towards the left side. like that and I use the yellow again for the highlighted areas here in the middle and I add more white to it for these really bright hexagons
So yeah, you can see it's quite a lot and it's repetitive. So I will speed it up again a little bit. So that's it for today. I think I will also add some bees and honey drops later. If you're interested in that, just let me know in the comments below. And if you still have questions, you can write them below as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and being here. I wish you a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.